Possibilities, a podcast for those who are ready to evolve into unstoppable, intuitive, and resilient entrepreneurial leaders. Every episode features successful business thought leaders who share their wisdom about insightful topics that help you amplify how you do business and serve yourself and others. Get comfortable and have fun as you listen to your host, Terry Wildeman, have lively conversation with her guest. Here's Terry. Oh, Welcome, everybody, to yeah. Awaken the Possibilities. It's Terry Wilderman here again, bringing you another wonderful guest. This week, we're going to be talking about, let's see, what's today? What, what is this topic? We just said it. <laughs> we just said the topic. Three, breaking three habits to reach your true potential. And it's being delivered by my colleague and friend, Judy Glover. And Judy is an intuitive leadership expert. Have you heard of intuitive leadership before? She's an intuitive leadership expert, speaker, executive coach, and trainer. So we talk about the same language. We talk about a lot of the same things. So it's going to be a lot of fun today. She leads us in unblocking our brain's potential by breaking the three key habits, helping us to maximize the power of our minds. So Judy, welcome. I love that you're here. We have so much in common with no. what we teach and what we do and how we do it. And it's just really, really exciting. So Judy, when you talk about intuitive leadership. Tell me what it's all about from your perspective. Yeah. Well, first off, Terry, I just also want to say I'm so honored to be here because you have been doing a lot of work around intuitive leadership for so many years, and I'm just grateful to be here talking to you today. And I just love talking about the topic. And I think from my perspective, um, I really look at intuitive leadership as being, you know, leadership from the inside out. Yeah. And it's not necessarily, you know, it's not from our heads. A lot of people think about, you know, oh, you know, leadership is That's strategy right. and all that stuff. But it's really the shifts that we make internally that really reflect our behavior on the outside. It and really does. It's that long journey. It's that long journey from the head to the heart. Uh, and how do we, how do we do that so that we're, I call it playing for, with a full deck. You know, it's like, you've got the logic, like you've got the heart, and you're playing with a full deck of cards. Absolutely. And that's also the, the foundation of emotional intelligence. When I originally started out 15 years ago doing what I'm doing, I started out with emotional intelligence. And that's all about how do we relate to one another? Because connection is currency. And you can think about currency as far as money goes, right? How much money do you make? You can think about connection as currency in terms of how do we relate to one another? How do we connect? Um, how do you build those strong working relationships? So it's, it's that currency. And, and if you even think about current, like what's that yes, energy? Absolutely. How we're connected, right? It's like, how do we create that currency, that, that vibe between us? So intuitive leadership is really how do we tap into our inner knowing and trusting it? Because so many of, and I'm sure you've real, you've probably experienced this too. It's like, mm. you'd be surprised how successful people are, but sometimes they don't even trust their intuitive knowing. They don't. And there's so much yeah. research out there that shows that the people who trust that intuitive knowing and they add it to their experience and their expertise, those are the best leaders in the world. They really, really are. And those are folks who are that, you know, because, and, and you and I have talked about this. It's about connecting the practical, tactical, and the logical with the emotional, the energy, the energetic, the spiritual, and the intuitive. And the folks in the, the leaders specifically who really get that, they know that when those intuitive hits come, it's important to ask the open-ended question that leads to discovery. So if they're at a team meeting, and you know this, we've talked about this, when they're at a team meeting and something doesn't feel right, and if you don't speak up, what happens, Judy? You tell me. Oh, it, it gets lost, right? You don't speak up, you get lost. There's not a sense of you know camaraderie. Like There's a lack of creativity and sometimes a lack of innovation. Exactly. And a lot of it is fear-based when you don't teach, uh, listen to your intuition because people think, oh, well, they're going to laugh at me, this, that. You know what? You don't have to tell people that it's your intuition that's, that, that's triggering the question. All you have to say is, you know, and, and, in, and in business, 
people say, you know, oh, my gut tells me. Well, they'll listen to that phraseology. Whereas if you say, well, my intuition tells me, they don't take it as seriously. Uh, I, I still don't understand that, but I, I've learned that to be true. Uh, mm -hmm. So when you go with your gut and you ask the, the logical question that will help you ease the tension and the feeling in your gut, that allows you to discover things differently. Don't you agree? Oh my gosh, absolutely. And, and it can be your gut instinct. It can be a, like, you know, some kind of like that shiver up your spine or somehow, you know, you're getting some kind of hit, right? You just yep. have a knowing. And, you know, sometimes it is from your gut, but sometimes it's just a knowing that you have, like a hunch. It is. Um, and your body wisdom is so powerful. I think our bodies speak to us constantly. And there's so many times that we're so, we're so, we're so in our heads that we're not even conscious of the, the body wisdom that's happening because we're so in our heads and yeah. we're not even paying attention to, oh, I feel anxious or, oh, I feel, you know, I feel uneasy about something. Um, yeah, we've had a lot of, mm -hmm. we've had a lot of habits or a lot of practice of suppressing that stuff. Like you said, people don't like to know that, oh, you had a feeling, right? That's right. How many people say, oh, the, oh feelings, they don't matter, right? So they don't matter. How, how do we, you know, twi you know, and if we have to tweak our language, that's okay. That's, that's a great okay. way being able to get the message sent, being the message received. So I'm curious, we talked about three habits. Mm -hmm. What's habit number one? So habit number one, I would say is that, you know, when people fear change or they don't welcome change, they resist it. And that takes the form sometimes of procrastination. Oh yeah. Because, yeah. Because we don't, you know, it's like, oh, I don't really like it, you know, and it feels uncomfortable. So there's resistance and we lock up. So there's that closing down, that, that clenching kind of feeling. <laughs> and I'm sure we've all felt it of like, oh, mm -hmm. I don't like we like change, but we like the change that we choose. <laughs> we're in control. <laughs> Pardon? We're in control. Yes. When we're in control, we like that kind of change. But when other people put change on us that we're not used to or that feels uncomfortable, there's that tightening. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So intuitively, we just need to be able to think about, like, how can I question, right? Ask those mm -hmm. questions of, like, yeah. why am I feeling this resistance because the resistance has something to teach us. That's a great question. A voice. If that voice could talk, what would it say? There's tons of wisdom in our resistance. And I think most people give resistance a bad rap. And resistance is actually a phenomenal learning tool. Mm -hmm. It really is. There's so much juiciness in our resistance because if we choose to really look at it, God, we can learn so much about ourselves and, and clear out a lot of the stuff that holds us back. Uh, so yes, thank you for talking about that. So what's the second habit, Judy? So the second habit is the inner critic, right? So it's really having, you know, the volume cranked up, cranked up on our inner dialogue. Because when we think about how you know, we were programmed as kids that, you know, you know, don't do this, don't do that. And, you know, there's the feelings that we suppress, right? I'm going to give you a visual. So, you know, if we have our ball of feelings, right, whether it's fear or anger or whatever, you know, we were taught that we have to suppress them. We have to push them down. Right. And sometimes it manifests though, as our inner critic. So mm -hmm. we do it to ourselves. Someone else may have taught us to do that to ourselves, but we suppress. Oh, that's not a good feeling. Then I'm going to mm -hmm. suppress it down. And then it comes back to, to haunt us in terms of our inner dialogue of like, oh, we're not being good or that's not right. Or as you said before, oh, I'm going to look stupid or yeah. whatever. Like that's our, that's where it comes from. It yeah, comes from it a place does. of learning to suppress it. And when we're able to just realize that that's what we're doing, you know, and 7 billion people on the planet do it too. <laughs> we can really yeah. let go. We can it's learn. part of the human condition. <laughs> Pardon? Part of the human condition. Yes, definitely part of the human condition. So and being able to, to shift that, being able to shift out of our inner critic is super, super important. And, it, and sometimes 
it can be challenging to shift out of that because those of us who are perfectionists, mm. oh, geez, we are so, the perfectionists, the perfectionism inside of us, not only are we in that state with ourselves, but we also are perfectionists with everybody else. And when you're a perfectionist with everybody else, you're in judgment of everybody else. And when you're in judgment of everybody else, those emotions make people feel like less than instead of elevate them. So it's a, a roller coaster of emotion that starts with you. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think perfection, to your point too, just to kind of dovetail on what you were saying is, you know, perfectionism is also a, a how do I say this? A lot of the, the, the clients that I work with, and there's actually one I, I was talking to the other day, it's like her problem isn't, isn't success. Her problem is over responsibility. And over responsibility is also a manifestation of perfection because it's like I've got to take care of me, I got to take care of you. I'm responsible for everything. Yeah. So it looks at like, oh, people are like, I'm so overwhelmed, and it's like, well, maybe it's because you're over responsible and you're mm -hmm. taking on other things that maybe if you learned how to let go, that it would be more beneficial. It would be beneficial to you because you would have more freedom. It would be beneficial to your team because they would be able to take on some of the things that, you know, that you can be delegating. And, yeah. and it comes down to, you know, going back to questions. It's like, could you let it go? Mm -hmm. If you could let it go, would you let it go? And when, like, how long yeah. do you want to hold on to all this like responsibility? And over, uh, over responsibility also has to do with control. Nobody oh. can do it as good as you can. Yep. Yep. And God forbid somebody else makes a mistake on my watch. Right. And that's also, I, I want to point out one thing, because I love that you said that, because it, it makes me think of how we all have superpowers, so, right? Yeah. So let's just say we are that person that's amazing at you know being in control and taking charge of things. And that's our natural awesome ability. That's our superpower. But if we overuse it, it becomes our kryptonite. Yep. And, you know, when, when I think about our leadership styles, we all have different leadership styles. It's knowing like, what's, what's that, what's that superpower maybe that you're overusing? And one of the things that I have, I actually have it on, on the, uh, the homepage of my website is this assessment that people can take. And it's the intuitive leadership assessment. And you can find out like, what is my profile? What is my superpower that I may be overusing because it's probably getting in my way. And one of the things that if you have the superpower of being really analytical, that's exactly where, you know, some of that inner critic, the second yeah. habit you need to break is like, oh yeah, you're really yeah. good because you have that inner critic that's happening. That's so. exactly right. And people who have that behavior style tend to be very pessimistic, tend to be skeptical, tend to be judgmental and for themselves too they're really hard on themselves oh really really hard so i know with when i work with those folks i ask them what's the difference between excellence and perfection mm. that's a big difference because i hold up uh, uh you know this little this is one of those little rappy wires right this is perfection how can you improve on that right i don't know if you can see it in the camera or not there we go there it is it's it's just a little you know sandwich trap okay so this is how many of these are sold a year uh billions so this little thing is perfect what if you can't really expand on this you can't really make this better it is what it is however with excellence it's excellent at this level, excellent at this level, excellent at this level, excellent at this level. It doesn't get stuck in this container of this little sandwich wrapper. Mm -hmm. You get to grow and grow and grow with excellence. Mm -hmm. So perfection puts you in a box. Excellence allows you to expand. Mm -hmm. And that is such a big deal for those of us who are perfectionists. It was something I had to learn. I used to be a perfectionist. I call myself a recovering perfectionist. Yeah. I, <laughs> just, yeah. just, just give me a little, a little too much, you know, stress. And sometimes yeah. I go back into it. <laughs> and 
And you know what? It's important that we know that. And that's what led me to multiple burnouts. I get it. You're right. So how about let's share number three. Have it number three. Ah, uh, so number three is over thinking. It's how we are constantly thinking and thinking and thinking. And I think it comes down to, and, and um, my client yesterday said it great. She said, I feel like I'm constantly second guessing myself and I can't make great decisions. And when we went through, when I walked her through, um, it's like a guided meditation, but it's also an interactive guided meditation. It's based on the Sedona method. And we were able to help her release because the thing is, is that there's a lot of like talk about, you know, judgments and conclusions that we've made about ourselves. You know, it's that, it's that mindset of, I can figure it out. I have to figure it out. <laughs> and that was the other, that layer, that other layer that we figured that we kind of pulled away. It's like, oh, it's not just that you're overthinking. It's that there's this obsession to figure things out. Yes. And the superpower is that she is an amazing problem solver. Wow. But she doesn't even, but she doesn't even feel like she's good enough at problem solving because she feels like she gets caught in the, in, in the, uh, in, in the, the yeah, yeah I, I can see that. And, and that is, you know, that decision-making piece for certain behavior styles, it can mm -hmm. be really, really hard. It can take a long time to make a decision. It's painful uh, to make decisions like that. And that's really cool that you were able to identify her superpower. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, we got to, we got to understand that there's three hooks that again, yeah. we all, we all kind of fall into. And when we get into overthinking there, it's usually because one, we have a story, like something happens and we tell ourselves a story about it. So the story is number one, because and we also believe it. <laughs> and then number two is that we don't like the story because we want to change it, fix it, do something or figure it out. And yeah. then the third thing is that we take it personally, that it's mm -hmm. about, about who we are, that somehow yes. it's attached to our identity or it's ruining our identity or we don't like what it's saying about our identity. So yeah. those three things we wouldn't hang on to the overthinking and get caught in that, you know, mind circles if we were able to just let that go. So, and the letting go can be the hard part. That's the hard part is the letting go. Well, in some ways, those three hooks are part of the solution. So how yeah. I walk people through that act, you know, the asking questions, it's being able to be inquisitive and helping them see that, Wow, let's look at that story. Hey, wow, let's let's really uncover um, what's going on with what you want to change and what you want to do, and how are you taking it personally? Because there are some people who are like, oh no, no, it's not me. It's about other people. <laughs> but in in some ways, the taking it personally is the projection. It is putting it onto other people. So I I just really love to unpack some of that stuff um, and be able to support people. Because when they can see how they're not serving themselves, it's, yeah. it helps loosen it up. It, it absolutely does. So can you summarize now the three steps again, or the three habits? Sure. Oh, the three habits. So the first one is that we're resisting change, right? So resistance, we're telling ourselves that resistance is bad, but actually it really does help us um, understand because there's a lot of internal wisdom that we have. So number two is all about how we have that inner critic that is preventing us from trusting sometimes our, our inner dialogue. It runs into that perfectionism and the over-responsibility. And then also the last one is about the overthinking. How are we so stuck in our heads that we're not able to unhook from those three things that, you know what, there's freedom there. It's, it's available to us and there's, there's many techniques that we can do. And part of what I'm really excited about is that every month I actually have a free support call that I do. Uh, it's called Release and Recharge. And people can come and experience what it's like to actually nice. do it. Because some people are like, I don't want to do that. That sounds weird. But when you do it in a group and when you can experience it, nice. and questions, it really kind of lightens it. You know, it, it makes it more enjoyable. And we mm -hmm. do a lot of laughing sometimes when we... When we do that, it. That's brilliant. That You'd be is surprised brilliant. what people's, you know, questions are about what they can let go of. And sometimes they're they're surprised at what comes up. Absolutely. I mean, it is like, really? That happened 30 years ago. Uh hello. <laughs>
oh, an yeah. inside out job. And, 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 and we realize that the journey inward is so rich. Like we can learn so much about ourselves. Um, so I find it fascinating. It is. It really, really is. Well, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here and sharing with us these three key habits to reach our true potential. Uh, there's a lot of juicy dialogue in there and a lot of great examples. So I just want to thank you so much because I am sure the Awaken the Possibilities audience is really, uh, they have taken something away from that. So Judy Glover, thank you so very, very much for being here with me today and sharing your wisdom with the intuitive, my uh, Awaken the Possibilities and Intuitive Leadership audience. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, my audience, this is Terry Wildeman. I just want to thank you so much for being here and listening every week as we bring you information to assist you to grow in mind, body, and spirit. For our new events and programs, please go to intuitiveleadership.com. And to listen to the website, please go to, to listen to the video and to the audio, go to awakenthepossibilities.com. Thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you in our next episode. Take care. Thanks for joining us for this episode. Visit our website at awakenthepossibilities.com to subscribe to listen and rate our podcast on your favorite platform, such as YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Cashbox, and more. For events, business, mindset, and leadership coaching services and courses, visit our website at intuitiveleadership.com. We look forward to sharing more insightful episodes and wish you much success in your business and life.